Welcome to this tutorial on how to make a fashionable fabric face mask. Here I show you an easy way to make a reusable and washable face mask from two squares of fabric. To start, you will need two 20cm fabric squares, one for the front and one for the back, two 60cm long elastic tapes, sewing thread and pins, iron and an ironing board, cutter, scissors and a ruler, and a sewing machine if possible. If you do not have access to a sewing machine, these can be hand sewn following the same instructions. For these masks, I am using a selection of printed cottons from our previous collection for the front and a tightly woven but slightly lighter weight plain cloth for the reverse. Step 1. Before you start, you may want to cut and prepare your fabrics and materials in advance. This is particularly helpful if you are making multiples and time saving if producing small batches. Here I'm using a roller cutter with a pinked blade to cut my fabric squares. If you are making multiples you might find using a template saves time when cutting. For the template I've used a piece of card measuring 20 by 20 centimeters. Step 2. Replace the fabrics face together and insert elastic tapes. Here I am pinning the elastic tapes to the top and bottom corners of the fabric. You will want the bands to run horizontally as they will these will form the straps that go around the back of your head. Place the elastic straps about 1cm in from the top and bottom edges to leave enough allowance when sewing. Tuck the straps inside the two pieces of fabric. Step 3. Pin and sew all four edges using a straight stitch. As the fabric is small, I've just pinned the corners, but you may find it easier to handle by pinning around all of the sides. Start sewing along the top edge in a straight line all the way around. Remember to leave a 1 to 2 inch opening on the final edge as you will need this for the next step. It helps to add a few back stitches to secure the opening. Step 4. Turn your mask right side out. Using the opening we left in the edge, turn the fabric inside out and gently pull the fabric through the hole. Corners. Use a blunt tool to push out the corners. This will give you a nice square shape and will make it easier to press and creates a nice shape and finish to your mask. Be careful not to push too hard as you risk breaking the fabric and compromising the seams. Step 5. Press flat with a warm iron. In this next step, I am closing the gap by simply folding the edges in and then pressing with an iron to make the fold creases. You may find this easier to pin whilst ironing, but be careful not to iron over the pins as this can mark or damage the fabric. Iron the mask on the front and back. Use a pressing cloth to avoid running the hot iron over the elastic straps. This can be a scrap of old fabric as long as it's big enough to cover the area. Step 6. Add in your three pleats. Once you have ironed your mask nice and flat, it's time to add the pleats. Starting at the bottom, fold the fabric down into concertina effect. It may help to measure and divide the fabric so that it makes three evenly spaced folded pleats. Pin as you go and adjust as necessary once the first pleat is in place. Once you get the hang of handling the fabric, it is much easier to achieve the even folds. The fabric should sit closely with the pleats laying one after the other. Step 7. Sew in the pleats. 
Once both edges are pinned, sew along the folded edge to hold the pleats in place. There is no need to sew the opening we made, as this will be closed when making the pleats. You may find this tricky as there is a lot of fabric that is going under the foot. It may take a little persuasion to get going, but try not to force it. Go slowly and be sure to take extra care when holding the fabrics very close to the needle. I'm using a white, all-purpose sewing thread. You may want to use a different colour thread for your top and bottom stitch to match your design and make the stitches less visible. Keeping the needle in the fabric, turn around and go back over your stitch line. Be sure to keep an eye on the straps and move them out of the way to avoid sewing over them. Once you have done this, repeat with the other side, removing pins as you go. Step 8. Trim loose ends. Using a pair of snips or scissors, trim any loose ends to give a neat finish to your item. Step 9. Press in pleats with an iron. Using your pressing cloth, gently iron to set the pleats. Remember to lift the straps out of the way to avoid running the iron over the elastic, which can cause it to melt and break. Turn over and do the same on the reverse. Step 10. Tie adjustable knots in the elastic straps. Find the centre of the strap by folding in half and making a loose knot in the centre. Do this for both straps. You can adjust a fit by placing the mask on and tightening the knots to a comfortable fit. You may want to use a mirror or get somebody to help you do this. And there we have it, your very own face cover. I found this design to be one of our favourite versions due to the adjustable elastic straps. The pleats create a nice cupped shape which helps give space over the nose and mouth to breathe. These are fully washable and reusable and I recommend reshaping whilst damp and giving a quick press back into shape after washing. To make a mask with loops that fit around the ears you can also adapt the same basic design by using shorter elastic straps sewn into the sides instead of the top and bottom edges. We have also made these with strings that tie instead of elastic. If you need to make a smaller mask, say for a child, simply adjust the size accordingly and cut the fabric into smaller squares. You can also use a rectangular template for extra width. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about our products, do head over to pipedesign.com where you can discover our colourful range of scarves, accessories and fabrics, all made here in the UK.